So about a year ago, I left Ensu and started a new company. Now, as I said, I want to build something which is 100x, 1000x of what I built in the past. So what are the differences in building a company in the digital age versus building a company in the past? So let me give you an example. Today, one of the most successful companies in India is Infosys. Infosys has about two and a half lakh people, has a market cap of $100 billion, unimaginable kind of size. But when you look at another company, let's say Microsoft, Microsoft has one and a half lakh people and the market cap is $2,000 billion. So what's the difference between Infosys and Microsoft? Microsoft is a company that's built in the abundance age, in the digital age. It's a product company. So what we're trying with Profit Wheel, we're trying to build a product company. Before starting the company, I raised 20 crores and put it in the bank. We're trying to build a global company. My co-founder is based in Boston. We're trying to build a SaaS company for the direct-to-consumer space. Again, it's a product company that can scale infinitely. So the way I define a services company is a company that has linear relationship with people. If you have $100 of revenue, you have 100 people. You want $200 of revenue, now you almost need 200 people. But a product company can be a WhatsApp, which can sell for $19 billion with only 55 people team. So the, what we're trying with Profit Wheel is a global scale SaaS company focused in direct to consumer space. And again, in great attempts, it is glorious even to fail. But this is what our attempt is going to be of building Profit Wheel into one of the largest scaled SaaS companies in the world. So I think I come back to my first answer. Why did I sell my first company? My first company was to create a safety net. Now, after having that sale done, I already have a safety net. So the way I look at it, when I looked at the money that I received from selling my company, let's say I received $100, what happened was that making that money work, whether you invest in real estate or stock market or angel investing that I do, it's extremely difficult to grow that money. But if I had just kept it in the company that I had, which was already successful, that multiplier would have automatically set in. So let me give you one example. All of us have heard of a person called Sabir Bhatia. He sold Hotmail for $400 million to Microsoft. So he probably received $100 million out of it. But I was talking to Sanjeev Bhikchindani, who built InfoEdge and Nokri.com. Now, when that company was sold, everybody looked at Sabir Bhatia. He was the most successful guy from India who has sold his company for $400 million. But today, in the last 20 years, Sanjeev Bhikchindani has built InfoEdge into a company that has 70, 80,000 crores of market cap. So what happens is that if I look at Profit Wheel becoming successful, holding Profit Wheel for as long as I live is the smartest way to make money. If it becomes successful, and let's say somebody is offering me 1,000 crores, I sell it, then that's all I have, 1,000 crores. But if I can work on it for 10 more years or 20 more years, that 1,000 crores will become 10,000 crores and 20,000 crores effortlessly. So I think what I recommend to entrepreneurs is the first company, there is no harm in selling it because you need to have a safety net so that it allows you to fly higher. But once you've sold your first company, then building an institution, leaving something behind, building a scaled global company should be the motivation because, you know, I wrote a book on happiness. Once you start earning about 50 lakh rupees a year, after that increased money does not increase happiness. So if, if your goal is to be happier, then building a scale global company, I feel is going to make me a lot happier. So I have a feeling that I'm going to keep profit wheel for as long as I live. So the way I look at it, if you ask my father or the generation before me, their first option was to get a government job because they came from a place of scarcity. So what happened in those days was that, you know, you wanted stability, you wanted to make sure that your basic needs of food, shelter and clothing is sort of given to you for the rest of your life. That's where they came from. If you ask my generation, then they would prefer stable companies like a Tata or Infosys where you can get stability, but you can also get some growth. But if you look at the new age companies today, if you join a company like Cred or you join a company like Profit Wheel, you can actually make 10x, 100x of what you could make in traditional scarcity companies. So the way I look at it is that today we're living in a digital age, which is an age of abundance. 
there is unlimited capital, there is unlimited talent, there is unlimited ideas and we are living in exponential technologies that are going to allow us to create a compounding of what we do with our lives. So I totally recommend everybody who is listening to this course to now look at joining digital companies that have infinite growth potential rather than joining stable companies which come from a very scarcity kind of a mindset.